Hey guys, in today's Disney Rewind, we're going to be talking about The Black Cauldron, released back in 1985. The Black Cauldron is about a young boy named Tarin who dreams of being a hero. So one day his dreams come true and he's thrust into this quest to look for the Black Cauldron, which the evil Horned King is looking for so he can make his evil army. So overall thoughts and feelings on the Black Cauldron? I actually enjoyed Black Cauldron. I could not remember what in the world was ha gonna happen in, in this movie, but it was certainly uh, different from the usual Disney movies. I don't mean that in a bad way. You know, it was nice to, you know, not have the, you know, super duper cutesy, you know, stuff for princesses. Kinda, it was kind of dark. And everything, yeah. It was kind of dark. And blood. Yeah, I think blood. this was our first sighting of blood, and it's also <laughs> the first PG rated Disney animated film. Really? What, have all the other movies been just rated G? Yeah. Mm, so Disney's getting dark. PG, you guys! <laughs> <laughs> so I just, I really enjoyed the tone of it, you know, and that it, it veered away a lot from the standard definition of a Disney movie. Yeah, I liked this movie. I wasn't in love with it. Yeah. But I did like it. It was vastly different. Like she just said, from all of the other Disney movies we've seen, which was kind of strange. Um, yeah, and like she said too, I did not know what to expect with this movie. I've only seen this movie once, and that was back when we first bought it. I think this uh, this VHS edition is from 1998, and uh, yeah, I think that was the one and only time we've watched this movie. So it was really nice to sit and, and watch it again, and kind of expect experience almost kind of almost experience experience it as if it was the first time <laughs> because yeah everything was brand new to me i did not know what to expect at all mm -hmm. and yeah it had a, a much darker tone which i kind of liked a darker atmosphere in general i mean yeah it wasn't the coloring wasn't really bright or vibrant or anything it was kind of a, a dreary movie <laughs> liked all the characters and thought the plot line was good and that each character had good uh, you know, their own little story mm -hmm. going on and everything. It definitely seemed like this was Disney trying to get in on the fantasy genre. Because uh, I don't think Disney has done, like... I mean, Disney has done fantasy. Mm -hmm. You know, something, you know, like the fairy tales are kind of a fantasy sort of thing. But not, not like diehard, like, high fantasy. You know, like, this is kind of what this was. It was high fantasy with a, a world and world building and... And, and backstory and a quest and that's the thing uh, what makes a fantasy is a quest usually the point of this movie was was that you know the the main character Tarin was you know seeking adventure seeking adventure but in his head yeah he you know he was like I'll never get out of here and, and he had like his little daydreams where he, he was a knight and yeah. stuff he he and was he didn't want to forever be a pig farmer yeah he wanted to be a knight or a warrior and go into battles and yeah he had this grand fantasy in his his head and so I think it was like you know a thing of stop living in your dreams and go and after the and be a hero <laughs> because he was it's like all of a sudden he he was forced and then being a hero. I think he was still stuck in his fantasy. Because yeah. He kind of wasn't, at some points it felt like he wasn't taking things seriously. Yeah. Because or he, he was thought... still stuck in yeah. his, his daydream and like yeah. maybe he didn't think things weren't as serious yeah. as he thought they were. It's like because he obviously, you know, heard stories about, you know, saving princesses and going on grand adventures and I think he was expecting certain things and sometimes those things wouldn't happen, you know? Like mm -hmm. he was expecting this fairy tale like it's sort gonna be of, easy like yeah. a book <laughs> yeah so yeah he he kind of discovers over the course of the movie what it means to be a true hero what it means to to save people you know to go on this epic quest and that it's it's more than what the books tell you <laughs> i guess <laughs> and that yeah he had he was forced into to joining this quest out of nowhere. So I guess just to get into some questions now, a uh, favorite character? Hmm. <laughs> Do I have a favorite character? No one really like 
popped out at me. Not that I hated anybody. Yeah, I didn't hate that. Yeah. I mean, I think I just liked everybody equally. Yeah. Though Henwin, Henwin yeah. was freaking adorable. The pig. That, that pig. Oh my goodness. I was like, why is he so friendly with that pig? I mean, that's his dinner probably. You know, once I fattened that pig up, there was no other reason to have... Well, no, I guess there was a reason to have that pig because that old man... Was it his dad or his grandfather or something? Mm -hmm. That old man was kind of kept that secret that Henwin was like this mystical pig who was an oracle. an oracle and he could see the future. That was weird. The Horned King, he was frightening. Like, I mean, he wasn't like the best, greatest Disney villain. But he's still like super creepy. But yeah, he was creepy as hell and scary. <laughs> Like, he was like definitely a menace. menace. You believed he was a villain. Yeah. Whereas, you know, so, you know, the cutesy cart Disney cartoons, you're like, I don't see you as yeah. a villain. You're too, like, comedic or something. Yeah. Yeah, he was definitely not comedic at all. He was serious. He was going to take over the world and kill everybody. <laughs> I liked, uh, Gurgi. Gurgi. The, I don't know what the heck he was. He He's like some kind of, like, weird little animal. He's like a mixture of things. Like, was he a talking dog? That thing was freaking Gollum. He was Gollum, you guys. You should, like, if you've seen it and you've heard his voice, if you've not seen it, you should just go look up the Black Cauldron Gurgi and, and go watch a clip of him and listen to him talk, and that's Gollum. Because even his manners, mannerisms, were like Gollum. Because he was all like, and he was like, he said something like crumbs and something. Like he was looking for like little crumbs of food or something. And it made me think, you know, I, Gollum looking for I have crumbs. I have expected Gurgi to say at one point, my precious. <laughs> yeah, because like he, like he had that apple core. Remember he gave up his apple core? Yeah. And then so he's going to be like, oh, my precious. <laughs> Because then he even called um, Tarin his master mm -hmm. and everything. So yeah, there was there was a Frodo Gollum mm -hmm. sort of relationship between Tarin and Gurgi. It was kind of weird. I was like, is is this influenced by Lord of the Rings? But yeah, I was wondering because this movie was was released back in um, the eighties, but the books themselves were released in the sixties. Mm -hmm. So I was sitting there wondering. I wonder if this is kind of influenced by by Lord of the Rings and yeah. Narnia at all because I, I really felt kind of that Lord of the Rings presence sort of. Mm. But yeah, my favorite character, uh, yeah, like I said, no one really stood out. I liked all the characters just fine, but yeah, I, I definitely liked Tarin, uh, Princess El Yonwi. We're, we're going to butcher all these names, you guys. Uh, the princess, I liked her. She was kind of badass, you know, kind of she wasn't the stereotypical princess. I mean, she kind of had her own mind, and if Tarn insulted her, you know, she was like, oh, how dare you? <laughs> we normally head into best song here, but there was, this, no songs. was this the first Disney movie with no music or songs? Possibly. I don't think there was any, yeah, there was absolutely no songs in here, and I think this is the first one with no songs. It did have some good music, It did have though. good music. It was appropriate music. Yeah, it had some music that really set the tone and atmosphere of the movie, for sure. Definitely, like, like kind of typical fantasy music. <laughs> mm -hmm. Favorite scene? Again, I don't really have, like, a scene that, like, stuck out to me. Um, but... Maybe when they were trying to escape the Horned King the first time, mm -hmm. when Tarin got into like his evil lair and stuff, and, uh, and him he and met Princess, Princess Alon, yeah. Alon Alon we, and stuff, and then they met Fluda, Fluda, <laughs> these Fluda. names, you guys. So yeah, I kind of just like that whole like traveling through the dungeon scene and everything. I definitely really liked uh, the ending action, you know, uh, the Black Cauldron, Gurgi sacrificing himself, a deep man. Yeah, I got deep. But he was okay. Yeah, and, and Tarin basically kind of just becoming a true hero. He lived his dreams. You know, even though I like the ending, I do kind of feel like the ending, it got, it it's was just, it was there. <laughs> over and done with. Almost, almost kind of anticlimactic. Yeah. Because it's like, what happened to the Horn King? Did I miss something? Did he just get sucked into the cauldron and died? Yeah. Is that what happened? Because all of a sudden, there he was, dying. Being destroyed, so that's kind of confusing. Yeah. But yeah, the ending action was great. Anytime Henwin was on the screen, I love that pig. I'll tell you what I didn't like. Anything with those witches? Yeah, I was going to say the witches. Oh my like god, I, I, I'm not even sure if I can even tell you what happened during those scenes because those were scenes, the only time... That's why it's PG, right? The only time during the movie when I was kind of drifting off, I about fell asleep, was when those witches came on. Mm -hmm. But you know, speaking of, you just mentioned the movie being PG again, there was just a lot of 
like we said, it was dark sub substance matter, but also just the nature, since it was fantasy, you know, all these, uh, these dudes, like these Viking looking dudes, and drinking, and kind of whoring around, it looked like, and like, the women with the chests, there was a lot of that going on, with mm -hmm. big chests on the ladies, mm -hmm. my goodness, and then that frog, when Fluta got turned into the frog, and he was stuffed down the lady's chest, that was a little too much. <laughs> So it's time now where I move to a book recommendation, but once again, I've been doing this for like two or three videos now, uh, more of like a fun fact book recommendation, because I don't really have anything to recommend unless you want to go read like Lord of the Rings or something. If you, if you like Black Cauldron, go read Lord of the Rings. But um, we found out that Black Cauldron is actually a series of books. Uh, like, like I mentioned uh, briefly earlier, the book series was released back in like the 60s by, Lore, Lore, by Lloyd Alexander. Is that who you said it was? Um, yeah, and the series is called The Chronicles of Pudain, and The Black Cauldron, this cartoon, was based off of the first two books in that series when I was doing my research really quickly. And I think it's like a six book series. And it's also based off of uh, Welsh mythology, mm -hmm. which also explains why the characters' names were so, so bonkers. Hard to pronounce. <laughs> But yeah, uh, if you did not know that, The Black Cauldron was based off of a series of books. I don't know if they were based off of children's fantasy or adult mm -hmm. fantasy. Mm -hmm. I couldn't tell from the description. Uh, but yeah, The Chronicles of Predain by, Lo Lo by Lloyd Alexander. So in conclusion, what would you rate The Black Cauldron on a scale of 1 to 10 Mickey ears? I think I would still put it there with the Fox and the Hound because, like, I didn't know, like, you know, super duper love it, but I still found it a very entertaining movie. Um, so I will still give it a seven. Yeah, I think I'm I'm leaning towards a seven, as well. Maybe. I don't want to give it a six. I think I feel like that's yeah. A I little, feel like six is a little too. Low. I feel like that's a little too harsh for this movie. Cause, but yeah, yeah, I was pleasantly surprised with Black Cauldron. Like I said, we didn't know what to expect. We didn't know what the story was. And mm -hmm. Yeah, a much more mature and darker Disney movie, which I kind of appreciated since I'm an adult now. <laughs> I, you know what? I wonder what I thought if if I had watched this as a Man, child. That was a violent movie. You know, if I had watched this as a child, like a really little child, like maybe you know, ten, nine, little, eight, younger than that, like maybe eight or something. <laughs> now, if I was eight watching this movie, I wonder if I would even have understood it or got it or if it would have scared the crap out of me. <laughs> You know, I feel like this cartoon, if you're going through the Disney library, I feel like you gotta wait to let your children watch The Black Cauldron. You know, wait until they're Stick a little bit side. older. Yeah, wait until they're a little bit older because I think it's kind of it's kind of difficult to understand in some ways. I think you have to have a bit more of a mature mind to understand it and understand the concepts there's like and the darker material. Death. Yeah. There's actual death. Yeah. And then, like, you know, bringing back to life, you know, Gurgi. Yeah. Uh, so that's something that, you know, somebody wants to understand. Yeah. So yeah. young, maybe. I mean, especially with the Horned King. I mean, his motives and agendas are really dark, and he's just a dark character and really scary and frightening. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't show your little five-year-old son. I wouldn't show him this movie. I would wait. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Maybe ten. <laughs> I mean, if you have a mature child, I mean, yeah, maybe you can go down to eight or something. But, yeah. Definitely not good for young children. Yeah. So that's it on our thoughts on The Black Cauldron. We liked it. It was fine. Had some great characters. Had a great story. We were pleasantly surprised. In the comments below, have you guys seen The Black Cauldron? Are you like us? Do you have no recollection of this movie? It seems to be one of the rare Disney movies. But yeah, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. So that's it for this month's Disney Rewind. We hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you liked this Disney Rewind, you may like these other Disney Rewinds. Bye, guys.